Everybody knows that the coolest things in life come in threes, like company, musketeers, and doors down. So we're gonna talk about three, specifically three, four timing, which is also a waltz time signature, and we're gonna learn, guess what, three different strumming patterns to help you get your waltz on, okay? So what is a waltz? Basically, it's just something in three, four time. What does that mean? It just means instead of counting to four, like you usually would, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're counting to three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. It kind of gives this like swaying back and forth type feel. So we're gonna do three different patterns. Uh, they might actually sound familiar. We're gonna kind of base all of them just to start off with on an A minor chord. And uh, the first one we're gonna do, uh, we're, all of them are gonna be a little bit dynamic. And instead of counting like, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. We're gonna use numbers. So one, two, three, those are the down beats. One, two, three, that means they're gonna be down strokes. When I say the word and, in between those, that's gonna be an upstroke, an offbeat. One, two, and, three, and, okay? So all the numbers are down. One, two, three, the word and is always up. One, and, two, and, three, and, all right? Now the first one we're gonna do is gonna sound like this. One, two, three, one, two, Really kind of like the simplest one you can do. What we're doing is we're gonna strike the root note of the chord and just the root note on the one, and then the rest of the chord is gonna be on the two and the three, so all downstrokes. And the root note of A minor is the open A string, okay? So if you're using a pick, your thumb, whatever, doesn't matter. This is gonna be really good target practice for hitting just a root note inside of a chord. So again, the one is gonna be open A string, and then the two and three are gonna be the rest of the chord. So from the D string all the way through. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So it's kind of, if you've never tried to play in three, four timing before, this is like a good intro to just like the bare bones of what a waltz is. To a C chord. To a G chord. All downstrokes, uh, play it as slow as you need to. You can speed it up if you want to. Practicing with a metronome is a fantastic idea. Uh, if you want to take one step further from this, maybe alternate bass notes. So the first bar of three will be one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm gonna go right below to the open E string. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Now, this will always work, because if we think about what we're doing, we're hitting an A, an a note and its chord, and then we're hitting an E note and its chord. So we're playing an A minor. In the, in the key of A minor, we've got A, B, C, D, E. So it's a root note, and then it's fifth. Anytime you root a chord voicing on the A string, its fifth is always gonna be the same fret that you're holding down on the E string. So let's say we're doing like a, like maybe a different chord, like a C major seven, like this, where I've got the third fret on the A string, the fifth fret on the D string, the fourth fret on the D string, and my pinky on the fifth fret of the B string. One, two, three, my root note is now three A. I can just move that up to three E. C to G. I don't even have to know the notes. I just know that going down a string, same fret, is gonna give me the fifth of whatever chord and that'll kind of give me a nice back and forth alternating type sound, okay? So that's a really, really simple one. A little bit dynamic because the first root note is always gonna have a little less volume than the whole chord is gonna be. So it kind of, you know, might seem a little bit different than just going. If I'm just doing this, I can be counting to three, but you would never know I'm counting to three because I'm just going one, two, three, one, two. There's no dynamic, there's no accent. This could easily be in four. One, two, three, four, it could be in seven, right? We can't really tell just by strumming unless you do something dynamic to restart the bar. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's what gives it that time signature, that kind of vibe, all right? So the next one we're gonna do is gonna be kind of like a Elliott Smith-ish between the bars. We're still incorporating that root note into it. We're gonna make it a little more dynamic, okay? So we're actually gonna take two bars of three. We can even think of this as one bar of six, if you wanna count it like that. And uh, I'll slow it down. And basically what I'm doing now is I'm taking an A minor, but I'm adding 
my pinky to the high E string uh, third fret. So now I'm adding a G to an A minor chord, which G is the seventh note in A minor. So I'm getting A minor seven. All right. So for the first bar, I'm just doing this. I'm getting the root note on the one. Nothing's happening on the end of one. And then the two and three and, I'm just kind of aiming for the D and G strings. Maybe even getting the B string. I don't have to be precise about this. I'm just going two and three and, down, up, down, up, okay? This is a good way to kind of break a chord into pieces. Instead of getting the whole, it's adding a little bit more of a dy dynamic. So basically that first bar is one, two, and three and. And now the real dynamic part, the cool part of this strumming pattern is on the next bar, we're really gonna hit that one hard with the rest of the chord, the top of the chord, the highest strings. So I'm getting maybe like the G, B, and E string, right? If you get more than that or less than that, it doesn't matter. As long as you give it a little more, a little more power, you're gonna get a cool sound. So we're also gonna get uh, the two and, and, and the three and with this two after I get that hard one on the second bar. So one, two, and three, and 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 one, two. F. C. I'm gonna move the root note of the C to a B. Now you can use this with any chord again. You know, we can take something totally different. We can take like a E minor seven flat five. Do a C minor seven flat five. We can get as weird as we want, but it's really just that kind of one, two, and three, and 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 even by itself muted, it kind of has a vibe. Okay, so the third one we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that middle beat, uh, we're not gonna leave it empty, we're just gonna add down strokes. So it's gonna be one and two, three and, one and two, three and. And it's gonna create a, kind of an interesting dynamic the way we're gonna do it. One and two, three and one and two, three and Is that in kind of a, a forward propulsion by leaving that the, the and of two wide open or every other beat of those six beats, one and two and three and four and, is it gonna be represented? But skipping that middle and of two beat kind of gives it a cool vibe. One and two, three and one and two, three and one and two, three and. And now if you notice, uh, dynamically, I'm working my way through the chord. So I'm not hitting just the root note, but the one and are gonna be the lower part of the chord. So maybe just like the A, B, and G strings. One and two. And now two, I'm going a little bit higher. Now I'm just getting D, G, and B. I'm leaving that A string out. One and two, three and. And then the three and the and of three is getting the top of the chord. And what that does is we're working our way through this chord. One and two, three and one and two. It adds kind of like an accent on the back of that bar. C. G. So that kind of, that hitch almost uh, by omitting the end of two, like I said, kind of creates like a accent on the backbeat there and kind of gives it like a driving kind of propulsion that brings you back to the one and kind of keeps it going. That's the cool thing about 3-4. I feel like if you like working with loops or a looper pedal, it's like a good thing to kind of keep you engaged uh, because, you know, there's a lot of different ways to play time signatures, honestly, but 3-4 is probably my favorite time signature because it always just kind of, it's, it's just real smooth and just keeps going and going. And uh, I think a lot of that is just dependent upon how you play it. So it's good to have a couple different strumming patterns under your belt in any different time signatures. So if there's maybe any other time signatures besides 4-4 that you'd like me to go over, hit me up in the comments uh, on Instagram, Twitter, the website, and I'll be back to you guys as soon as I can. Thanks a lot.